build it? Yes. Is what happened when my wife was sick one day and left me to mind the house. We oh, thank God it is all over. It is a relief to my brain. My wife, she now is better and he's on her feet again. One day last week she got the flu and in bed she had to stay and she said to me, Paddy, I can't get up. Could you manage anywhere? He had a nail said, I, why not I? What is that to be doing when he sends the children out to school? To me it will be just fun. But now I know what fun it was. And you'll know just as well when you'll hear the models I got into that they were just like hell. I always thought that women had the finest time in it. Only gossiping with the neighbours over the half door or sitting by the hearth. But now for them I've pity they are wonderful, no doubt. How they find time for gossip, I can never figure out. <laughs> On the day I was keeping house, my wife said from the bed, Is there any chance now, Paddy, you throw down a cake of bread? <laughs> I will said, I will tell me the ingredients I want. I'll blend them together and I bet it will be grand. But before I did finish, I did pat me to the bed asking where I'd find this and that to put in the cake of bread. And when I had it kneaded and ready for to bake, there was more flour in my hands and claws than there was inside the cake. <laughs> but I put it in the oven over a blaze and fire black your hands. And I said, no, white is baking. I run to the shop back to my lands. I happened to be delayed there. And alas, when I returned and uncovered the oven, the cake was all black and burned. <laughs> I tried to scrape off the burned crust to make it edible for the wife, but I only brought the handle off a Sheffield stainless knife. <laughs> <coughs> I cursed and prayed together, I was nearly off my head. I had to dump my homemade cake and go for Katniss bakery bread. <laughs> and what she started calling, she was longing for a fry. She taught me how I'd cook it, so I said it would try. My fry was going grand and top gear to delight the heart of man, to singing like a fiddle and dancing in the pan. <laughs> would I twin a cup of water to make the out of the grace? The whole thing then exploded, <laughs> and the frying pan went to blaze. I grabbed the burning frying pan from the door that wheel. But the dog he came before my legs and I was pitched head over here. The burning grass was splashed all over me as my forehead hit the floor. The dog roaring with a scalded arse out through the window door. <laughs> that evening then the children from school came tramping in. You couldn't hear your ears with them such a racket in a din. Quarrelling over this and that, I never had such rows. Or how did they wear to pick this day to go mad around the house? <laughs> they were calling for their dinner with the hunger that it showed. When I went to boil the kettle, the fire it had gone out. <laughs> when at last the night came on and the children did retire, I sat down exhausted in my chair beside the fire. I took up the daily paper to read it for a while, but soon I was in darkness, the lamp ran out of oil. <laughs> I cut the hot door up to fill it, and God forgive me, I did fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> but I was so tormented, I was praying to God to kick the bucket. <laughs> I shook my hand with the burning pain from the wife there came a scream as her fireproof pirate's globe smashed in the floor in smithereen. She said, go down there to the dresser, you'll find a candle there. There's one left over after Christmas and for God's sake don't break to it. <laughs> well, I am one cursed man wherever there's another. For I broke a chain of the as a wedding present from her mother. <laughs> Another lecture from the bed. <laughs> Saying I'm to an awful course. 
He stayed and went home and we're going from bad to worse. <laughs> <laughs> no one in the world knows what women go through. Or how did the good God ever splice me to an awkward tour like you? <laughs> Anyway, I lit up my candy, and the light was not too clear. And to have it close beside me, I placed it in the sconch in the range I was sitting near. I then read on my paper, till the light flickered and grew strange. When I looked, there was my candle in a pancake in the range. <laughs> Before I do more harm for the bed, I didn't address. But I struck my foot against the pole and spilled peace all over the place. <laughs> as long as I live, I won't forget the doing she gave to me. The story wouldn't be too bad at all if she wasn't suffering from a bad dose of the galloping dairy. <laughs> After I came up the room, I got into bed, and I was nice and cosy there, when there was a cry of anguish from a child in bed upstairs. <laughs> Saying, Daddy, come up, I'm awful sick, I think I'm going to puke. <laughs> and to comfort her, I had to hop out of my warm nook. There, hurrying in the darkness up the stairway, did go. I stuck my foot against the step and disjointed my big toe. <laughs> Eventually, when I got back into bed, I got under the warm toes. With a naked head and painful toe, I had started off the doors. The dog then started barking. <laughs> and she woke me with a roar. I swear to Christ, Betty, that's the fox. Did you close the follows door? <laughs> to add to my misfortune, there I was again, running out to close it and I clean naked to the skin. <laughs> I returned from the hen house, my backside is cold as clay. The flash that froze my thighs and toes and perished my what I won't say. <laughs> I squeezed her and near me from the heat. I was colder than a corpse. She said, keep out of me, but you're nice to let her me the relapse. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't be caught again. I'll know what I'll do. The very first sneeze I'll hear out for, I'll start sneezing too. <laughs>